I'm Stacy. I'm Jenny. And this is Learning for Life, a homeschool podcast. We are two homeschoolers who use different methods, curriculum, and strategies to make it all work. Our goal is to help parents teach kids how to develop a lifelong love of learning. Hello and welcome to this installment of our homeschool how-to series. These are just really quick, concise episodes in which Stacy and I take turns diving into specific homeschool topics. I'm Jenny, and today I'm going to be talking about Shakespeare. Now, if you've clicked on this podcast episode and you're listening to it, you're probably prepared to hear about Shakespeare, and you're either in one of two camps. You're either super into Shakespeare, studied him growing up, loved his plays, excited to teach him in your homeschool. And then there's the other camp where it's like, ugh, I hate Shakespeare. I hated it in high school when we used to read Romeo and Juliet out loud. I've never enjoyed watching a performance, and I'm really dreading teaching this in my homeschool, but I know that I want to. Well, you're in the right place. This is where I'm going to just speak very quickly about how to teach Shakespeare, but if you ever have any questions about this, just feel free to email us at kidslearningforlife at gmail.com, and I'm happy to help. Okay. So let's start with my very first step of teaching Shakespeare, especially to young kids, is to start by reading a short children's version of a particular play. So let's just, for example, talk about The Tempest, because that's the first one that I did with my kids last year. And this one is a great one to start out with because it's really not intense at all. And it's actually pretty easy to follow because you know, in Shakespeare plays, things can get kind of confusing. People are pretending to be other people. People are in love with someone who pretend, who is actually someone else. The Tempest is actually relatively straightforward. So that's why I suggest starting with that one. And you want to read a short children's version of it. So there are two books that I've heard of that have really great children's versions of Shakespeare's stories. So these are called Tales from Shakespeare by Charles and Mary Lamb or Beautiful Stories from Shakespeare by E. Nesbitt. These are both great resources for you. You can just kind of introduce your child to the plot and the story. And then even in some of those stories, they introduce some of the Shakespearean language so that you're not totally going into future steps of what I'm going to talk about without having heard any of the Shakespearean language. And I would even suggest for older kids, maybe high school age, skipping this step and just going straight to reading the actual play. And I know that sounds really daunting, but trust me, I just read my first Shakespeare play from beginning to end. It really wasn't that hard. I was shocked. So you will also be surprised at like how kids can really interpret literature and get them really excited about that. And I think it will go over better than you probably anticipated. Now, I also want to mention that a really important part of teaching Shakespeare is watching some sort of live performance. And this doesn't mean like live in person, you're sitting in the audience and there's a play going on in front of you on stage. You can also just stream some sort of live performance, whether it's a version on YouTube or if you subscribe to one of these um, these theater subscriptions where they stream the plays. I just subscribed to Broadway HD and they have a bunch of Royal Shakespeare Company performances on there, which are great. You can do that there. And it's watching the performance is probably the most important part of teaching Shakespeare because the the plays are not meant to be just read. As much as I enjoy doing that and reading the plays and kind of interpreting them for myself, the plays are really just a blank canvas and the plays come alive when you see them performed in front of an audience live by different actors with different directors. I mean, these plays can be interpreted in so many ways and it's really cool to see the plays just come alive with someone's vision of what they were envisioning while reading the script. So I recommend checking out some sort of live performance somewhere online or, I mean, even better in person, but I know that's not always an option for people. So that is really how you're going to get your kids super excited about Shakespeare because Shakespeare is not boring. Contrary to popular belief, these plays are super rich and dense with drama, comedy. I mean, there's like violence. (laughs) There is love, all sorts of things. 
kids are not going to inherently find Shakespeare boring. Trust me. So one other step that I wanted to mention is to find some sort of resources that break down Shakespeare in a way that is helpful. So the only way I've been able to find to do this effectively with my kids is to listen to the Chop Bard podcast. In this podcast, the host, Aaron Ziegler, he breaks down each Shakespeare play scene by scene, basically. And it's amazing. He knows so much about the background of these plays because there's almost always some sort of historical background or maybe even like personal life background of Shakespeare's own life that he's kind of putting into these plays. And we don't know a ton of sh- about Shakespeare, but we can kind of know based on the time and place and all that. It's important to know these kinds of things so that you understand what Shakespeare was trying to tell his audience. Anyway, my kids just love the Chop Bard podcast. Aaron Ziegler always makes Shakespeare so fun. And his tagline for the podcast is the cure for boring Shakespeare. Because like I said, Shakespeare is not boring. Contrary to popular belief, it is thrilling. So I highly suggest checking out that podcast. I will link to it below in the show notes. And another fun activity for your kids, if they're super tactile or they just, they like to do things physically, then I would suggest just having your kids or a group of your kids and their friends maybe act out certain scenes from Shakespeare. They don't have to go off of any sort of script. They can kind of just do it based on what they know of from the stories. So you could have, you know, each kid play a different part and just have them interact with each other as if they would be interacting with each other as those characters. So that's a really fun way to make Shakespeare fun for kids and also reinforce what they just heard in the stories. I mean, you can't act out a play unless you really understand the story. So this is a great way to just make sure they're comprehending what they're learning. Anyway, as you can tell, I'm very excited about Shakespeare and I want you to be excited about teaching Shakespeare as well. So like I said, if you have any questions, feel free to email us kidslearningforlife at gmail.com. Also, feel free to find us on social media. Um, We're always Kids Learning for Life on there. And then our YouTube channel, I actually have a whole video that goes more in depth about how to teach Shakespeare. And our YouTube channel is Kids Learning for Life. So... I think that's it for today. Don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review and a rating that really helps other people find our show. And with that, it's time for me to say, see you next time.